All right, everyone. So it's Friday night. I'm getting ready to go out. This is the love. I'm feeling kind. But before I go out, I've got a pregame. And the only way I pregame is with an ice cold Bud Light. Ugh. Ugh. So good. Ah, happy Friday. Well, there you go. <laughs> What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, your super duper Uber drivers here, guys. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, you already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. Come on. Let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Yeah! Okay, okay, party people. Welcome back. And if you're new to my channel, thank you for hitting that subscribe button. <laughs> All right, kid folks, what are we talking about today, folks? Man, we got to talk about Trump's new strategy. And I'm loving it. Now, it's been going on two weeks have we heard anything from Trump. No rallies, no interviews. He's not talking shit about uh, Biden. He's just falling back and let the media do their thing. And it's driving the left crazy. We have The View Navarro here. Now, mind you, she's supposed to be a Republican. And she says this. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm worried and I'm pissed. Frankly, I'm livid. Because for the last eight days, it feels to me, I have seen nothing but breathless reporting. It almost feels like media malpractice of them trying to score the winning goal against Biden. Who can have the gotcha moment? They've been splicing, dicing, cubing everything he says, putting on a microscope, uh, microscopic slide, and then looking at it under all sorts of you know, magnifying glasses. Look. Joe Biden is the nominee. He is the human being standing between us and Donald Trump. I think Democrats need to stop making the case against Joe Biden and start making the case against Donald Trump. I think the media needs to give some parity to the coverage that they are doing because in, the, in, their, in their seal to fact check Joe Biden, mm -hmm. they too are making mistakes. Yeah, yeah, driving her crazy. Nobody's talking about Trump. Because Trump is not out there. He's on the golf course, relaxing with his family and kicking his feet back while you people are throwing mud at each other. Biden had to come out and fight his own battles. And Biden went on Morning Joe, a friendly show, and he went in there acting like a cranky old man. Think of the things he lied about. He said, talked about he gave the largest tax cut in history. Yeah, he gave the largest tax cut in history to millionaires and billionaires. He said that he's going to, those 10% universal tax proposal is not going to drive prices higher. Every major economist in the world is saying it's going to drive the average $2,500 per person. Only jobs he created for illegal immigrants and bounce back jobs and bounce back from COVID. Give me a break. That's what he said at the convention. I mean, excuse me, at the debate. He, I mean, everything he said, he said, you know, he largely fixed COVID. Are you kidding me? And what happened? Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything except me. The reason I've been out on the road so much all over the country, and while Trump is riding around in his golf cart, filling out his golf cart before, golf cart before he even hits the ball. But anyway, he hadn't been anywhere in 10 days. I've been all over the country, number one. What? What is he talking about? I think he's trying to say that Trump fill out his card before he gets on the golf cart, trying to imply that Trump cheats in golf. Whatever. So Trump said, okay, no problem. I'm on the golf course relaxing. I'm chilling while you out here defending for your political life. Right now, Donald Trump leads in an aggregate of national polls by about three percentage points. If you go back four years ago at this point, Joe Biden was ahead by nine points. This right now don't look anything like what we saw four years ago at this point. I then decided to take it a step further. What was Biden's worst 2020 polling position? He was ahead by four points, which basically matched 
what he ended up beating Donald Trump by in the national popular vote. So this three-point advantage for Donald Trump is Donald Trump's best position versus Joe Biden, whether you include the polls this year or you include the polls last cycle. The idea that the polls underestimated Joe Biden last time around, simply put, does not hold any water, Mr. We have Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I haven't seen her in forever with her curly curls. She's out here, and I think she's a little frustrated. I, I'm frustrated that the media is literally dissecting every word that comes out of Joe Biden's mouth and is ignoring the fact that the Republicans are about to nominate, uh, again, a convicted felon who's an adjudicated racist, who still denies that he lost the 2020 election, who is committing to d upend every single accomplishment that Joe Biden has helped make sure we can recover after COVID and the 15 million jobs that were created. Yeah, I, I am pushing to make sure that we can focus on what the danger lurking uh, down the road is, is that if we don't make sure that we rally and focus on Donald Trump and the extremist uh, good versus evil existential threat that he represents to our democracy, then we're going to end up back there again. And that's the nightmare scenario my constituents want to avoid. <laughs> yep. Yep. Nobody talking about Trump. Everybody's focusing on Biden's faux pas. Ta-da. Here's one thing that I love about Trump. He gave an example. If life give you lemons, add some sugar to it and make some lemonade. Now we have Michael Moore. Michael Moore is one of Trump's biggest haters out here, okay? Ever since Trump been running, Michael Moore been out there campaigning against him. And one interview, this is a few years ago, he was talking shit about MAGA and what MAGA see in him and why that people are drawn to Trump. And he was trying to make, he gave us a backhand compliment, basically. So Trump, here's the interview. Trump takes the interview add some sugar to it, and made an ad out of it. Donald Trump came to the Detroit Economic Club and stood there in front of the Ford Motor executives and said, if you close these factories as you're planning to do in Detroit and build them in Mexico, I'm going to put a 35% tariff on those cars when you send them back and nobody's going to buy them. It was an amazing thing to see. No politician, Republican or Democrat, had ever said anything like that to these executives. And it was music to the ears of people in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, the Brexit states. You live here in Ohio, you know what I'm talking about. Whether Trump means it or not is kind of irrelevant because he's saying the things to people who are hurting. And it's why every beaten down, nameless, forgotten, working stiff who used to be part of what was called the middle class loves Trump. He is the human Molotov cocktail that they've been waiting for. The human hand grenade that they can legally throw into the system that stole their lives from them. And on November 8th, election day, although they've lost their jobs, although they've been foreclosed on by the bank, Next came the divorce, and now the wife and kids are gone. The car's been repoed. They haven't had a real vacation in years. They're stuck with the shitty Obamacare bronze plan where you can't even get a fucking party set. They've essentially lost everything they had except one thing. The one thing that doesn't cost them a cent and is guaranteed to them by the American Constitution, the right to vote. They might be penniless, they might be homeless, they might be fucked over and fucked up, it doesn't matter because it's equalized on that day. A millionaire has the same number of votes as the person without a job, one. And there's more of the former middle class than there are in the millionaire class. So on November 8th, the dispossessed will walk into the voting booth, be handed a ballot, close the curtain, and take that lever, or felt pen, or touch screen, and put a big fucking X 
in the box by the name of the man who has threatened to upend and overturn the very system that has ruined their lives. Donald J. Trump. They see that the elites who ruined their lives hate Trump. Corporate America hates Trump. Wall Street hates Trump. The career politicians hate Trump. The media hates Trump. After they loved him and created him and now hate him. Thank you, media. The enemy of my enemy is who I'm voting for on November 8th. Yes, on November 8th, you, Joe Blow, Steve Blow, Bob Blow, Billy Blow, Billy Bob Blow, all the blows get to go and blow up the whole goddamn system because it's your right. Trump's election is going to be the biggest fuck you ever recorded in human history. And it will feel good. This got to be the one of the best ads I heard in a long time. Using Michael Moore's voice, being a narrator, and showing all the frustration of all the folks. And you can hear it in his voice. And Trump used that. He took that, add some sugar to it, mm. and made some lemonade. I'm loving it. Thank you, Trump. Thank you, Michael Moore. No. <laughs> if you guys got any value out of my content, do me a favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on the notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends and tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you liberals, get your ass off my lawn. <laughs>